Hi, I'm Eagle, I'm a data scientist living in London, and welcome to another video of this time series crash course. In my recent videos, we've been building the ideas behind exponential smoothing, and in this final video, we're going to discuss the Holt Winters model. Particularly, we'll cover what is the Holt Winters model, how it is used, why it's important, and how we can do it all in Python. So let's get into it. On your screen now is a notebook that we're going to work through that will tell us all about Holt Winters model. So let's begin with kind of discussing the, a big a bit of a recap behind exponential smoothing. So like I said, in my recent videos, we introduced the idea of these family models, which are exponential smoothing. And the main gist of them is that we are putting more weight on recent observations and less on historical ones. And the most basic one, which we covered, is called simple exponential smoothing, which is basically a model that just considers the level of the time series and doesn't take into account trend nor seasonality. The next one we discussed in my previous video was the Holtz linear trend method. And this one is known as double exponential smoothing because it takes into account both trend and, and, um, and level. Sorry. However, it doesn't take out seasonality. And this is what the final method is. And it's going to be the Holt Winters model, which is also called triple exponential smoothing. You can see why this naming convention comes around. It's triple because it takes into account both level, trend, and seasonality. So all three, so therefore, is known as triple exponential smoothing. So let's quickly go over the theory behind how it takes into account seasonality. So for the additive model, again, if you want to know more about what additive versus multiplicative means, make sure you check out my other video on decomposition, which will explain the difference. So what we see here is basically the three parts broken down. We have the level equation, the trend equation, and the seasonality equation. We discussed about the level equation in this simple exponential smoothing um, model video, which you can see in this playlist. In my previous video, we discussed the trend equation, which was in the Holtz linear trend method, which you can see in the in that in that video in, in this playlist. And finally, we add the seasonality equation, which is part of the whole winters model. And what the seasonality equation does is it gives the model some intuition behind any seasonal components that may be present in the time series. So I won't spend too much time over the level equation and the trend equation because we've covered this before in previous videos. We'll proceed to discuss basically what the seasonality equation is doing. So as you can see here, it looks kind of scary, but don't worry too much. Um, what it's kind of doing is that you can see we have yt, which is the time series at this time step, the level equation at this time step, and the trend equation at this time step. And essentially what it's trying to say is, you know, like the value of this time step as a function of level and trend um, multiplied by this gamma parameter. So it's, I can see why it may not be that intuitive, but basically what it's saying is what is the seasonal components left over after we take into account level and trend, right? Because ultimately we have a value, we take away the trend component, we take away the level component, what's left over is gonna be the seasonal component by just, you know, like natural intuition. And the strength of this sort of seasonal component is measured by this gamma factor, which is what gets fit in our, in when we, when we fit these models and it's done for us in our Python packages. So it's really not that complicated. Um, again, it's just basically doing the inverse. It's not trying to find a seasonal component. It's more saying what is the seasonal component given we've taken into account both level and trend. That's all it's doing. So I hope that makes sense to you. Again, don't worry too much about the maths. It's all about the intuition and understanding what's happening under the hood, but necessarily doing this by hand because realistically, you know, when we put models in production, we do it in Python and Python has packages which does it for us. Luckily, because doing this by hand will take forever. So here, another point to point out is that M is the seasonal seasonality of the time series. Again, seasonality just refers to how often data um, repeats itself. So if we have um, monthly index data, the time series at a yearly level would be, or the seasonality at a yearly level would be 12, right? 12 months a year and so on. So you get the point. Um, and again, uh, gamma is a seasonal smoothing factor, which is which takes the values from zero to one minus alpha. Alpha is a, like the level smoothing factor, and that's also calculated whilst fitting the model. The multiplicative model takes a very similar approach, but instead of you know subtracting because it's it's um it's not subtracting, it does the dividing because it's multiplicative. 
So what it's saying is, after we divide by the sum of the linear and the trend component, what is the seasonality component left over? Very similar principle, interesting in this case we're dividing because it's a multiplicative model. Like I said, don't worry too much about these equations. Now you can see that we can combine all these kind of three models into the single overall equation for our time series. Um, again, it's just for an additive model, we're just adding all the components together. For the multiplicative model, we multiply the, some of the components together. Again, don't worry too much about it. It's just, again, understanding the intuition. And so we can apply it and you can get the basic grasp. When you try and explain these models to stakeholders, you kind of understand what's going on. But this is by far the most, you know, um, uh, what's the word, like complicated uh, um, exponential smoothing model there is really. It doesn't get that much more complicated than this. Again, you can also add some dampening to it. We discussed in this previous video, um, but Holt Winters is kind of like the, the pinnacle of exponential smoothing models. It doesn't really get more complicated than that because it takes into account all the components, you know, level, trend, and seasonality. That's all you've got to remember. Now, the way you implement it in Python is also quite straightforward. You can simply use the stats models TSA Holt Winters package, um, and then we can import, you know, simple exponential smoothing, the Holt linear trend model, also known as double exponential smoothing, and also exponential smoothing, which is basically just Holt Winters. We'll then read in our data, which is from the Air Passenger data set. Again, I've used this data set all my videos. Um, it's just a US airline passenger volume between 1950 and 1960. If you want to play around this data in your own time, I've linked this notebook and also the Medium article, um, which you can access this data set if you need to. We will then split our data into a train test set, that's normal, and then we'll plot it using this function. We'll plot kind of five things. We'll plot the train set, the test set, and we'll also plot the simple model, uh, double exponential smoothing, which is Holtz linear model, and the whole winter's model as well. So, and then after that, we'll fit our models. So again, here we'll fit the simple exponential smoothing model, the Holt model, and then we'll fit the seasonal model. You may, before I saw, I did this, the seasonality component is multiplicative because the fluctuations increase through time. Um, I kind of pre-looked at the data and also the seasonal periods are 12 because our data is indexed by month. Um, and so it's, it's, um, it's seasonality component will be 12 because it's 12 months in the year. Again, don't worry too much about this. This is more just an example of how you'd fit a model. In your own time, you probably need to look at the data and decide is it multiplicative, is it additive, and what are the seasonal periods. And simply running the cell, we should get our forecasts or our plots. So as you can see here, we have our training uh, set and our test set, or I forgot to call it test. Oh well. But you get the orange here is our test set, and we also have a training set here. As you can see here, the simple model is basically the worst. It's simply a naive forecast. The Holtz linear model, aka double exponential smoothing, is a bit better because it takes account of the trend. But you see, Holt Winters is really good because it's really captured both that sort of increasing and also that seasonal component. As you can see, the difference between the actual the test data and the Holtz Holt Winters model is not much into it really. Like it's pretty good at fitting the forecast, oh, fitting the time series, sorry, which is pretty good going. Um, we can also diagnose the Holt Winters model by running this dot summary. And as you can see here, we have all the values. I'm not going to dive into everything in this case, um, but all the different things that have been fitted to our model. Again, it's evaluation criteria, SSE, AIC, BIC. We then also have the various um, smoothing parameters um, fitted to our model. So the alpha smoothing level value, beta, our trend level, and then the gamma, which are C, our smoothing Cs or components. So what we see here is that alpha and gamma are relatively high, which indicates that the seasonality and level components vary quite frequently, which makes sense. As you can see, the seasonality is kind of increasing through time, but also it's got these little wobbles here, so it's relatively high. But you see here that the trend is quite low. So in other words, the trend is not that volatile. It's pretty much always increasing through time, which is pretty obvious, right? There's no sort of like up down. It's very much just up, which makes sense. Let's quickly recap over the key points discussed in this video. Holt Winters forecasting is a pinnacle of exponential smoothing models because it takes into account all three things: trend, seasonality, and level. 
As shown by the Python example, it was by far the best exponential smoothing model and beat both the simple and Holtz linear trend models. If you're looking for the best exponential smoothing model for your data, then Holt Winters is where you should begin because it gives the best forecasts. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about time series and forecasting, then make sure you check out our other videos in this playlist. Also to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.